You know, I think that all is fair in magic as long as you're willing to own it and accept responsibility for what you do. And I think that's why it's, it's important not to do anything that you're not personally comfortable with. You know, because what's right for me certainly may not be right for the rest of you. Uh, one of my favorites is somebody that did a spell that they wanted to, to be, be around money, you know, the, the money thing. And they got a job as a bank teller at lower it. minimum wage. So they were around all of this money. But none of it was none theirs. theirs. None of it oh, was theirs. Lord. Okay, you know, T Tish may disagree with me on, on this, and, and that's okay. Um, I, I think that, that you teach them like they are miniature adults. One, one of the problems that I had when I started out in the craft is they all wanted to teach me about religion, and you know what? I wanted to learn magic, and so I wasn't allowed to do magic. And do you think that fucking stopped me? No, it did not. It's like t telling teenagers not to have sex. Get them a whole drawer full of condoms because they're going to have it. Okay? So, so you know what? Newbies are going to practice magic. And, you know, the interesting thing about this was I made some messes. But I couldn't tell anybody I made the messes and get help cleaning them up because I wasn't supposed to be doing this shit to start with. So what happened was I learned to clean up my messes. And I learned to... You know, and, and this is where a lot of my magical experience came from. You know, this works, this works, this works. Eh, hey, maybe we want to word this a little differently. You know, what one of the big fuck ups was a love spell I decided to do. It took me 20 years to get rid of that guy. And I mean, that was after a divorce and a remarriage and everything. Okay? And I still couldn't get rid of him. So, um, yeah. So, so I, I would teach them about doing magic. You know, start them out with something like wish magic. I don't disagree. I, I think that they should be taught, and I think that we better teach them because well, somebody else will be happy to. How to well, you know what? Do, oh, the how to. Do a, do a spell. Do something like... Um, Just show what you know. Do, do, do some kind of a spell maybe for prophetic dreaming. So, you know, something that, it, that is not going to get them in trouble. Or Dorothy and I could do a class for the teenagers. <laughs> you know what? I bet, I bet all the teenagers would be accompanied by their parents well, if we did a class. That'd be all yeah. right. But, you know, I, but I, I, would, I would do something like, like that. Some kind of little fun something. Okay? Can we get some ideas about that? Are you going to talk to us? I was, I was just going to add one thing to that. Usually yeah. when either... I mean, because it's not always, you have adults that are new to the craft, or God forbid you have an adult that's been part of a stupid group for 15 uh -huh. years that didn't teach That shit. never happens. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, that uh, happens. You'll have that. And yes, you will. end up mopping up after them for yeah. six or seven years, which is all well and good. I'm glad we're there to do the mopping. But I usually consider magical training real similar to firearms training. Like Tish said, if you don't train, if you don't teach them, someone else will. Uh -huh. And you have to teach them to take it as serious. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, th this is as serious as teaching you to fire a weapon. Why to do it? How to do it? How to do it without hurting yourself and those around you, especially yourself. You know, one one of the exercises that I would give teenagers to do. Of course, this is probably going to turn them off. But I think it's really, really important because. Teenagers ha do have a short attention span. One of the, the first um, exercises I used to give my pre-initiates, my, my neophytes, was to think one thought and work up to five minutes holding only that one thought in the mind's eye. And that takes some practice. But my favorite is think no thought for five minutes. Nothing. And there's a trick to it. So, Mama, I'm going to give you 
I'm going to give you the secret tool, but you, but you can't tell them. You, you let them ponder over this and work with this for a while, and then see if they're still interested in magic. The key to that is, in your mind's eye, you see a blank video screen. And you just keep expanding and expanding and expanding it in your mind's eye until the edges are gone. OK? Yeah. But it is a no thought kind of thing. In order to work successful magic, you have to have that kind of focus and concentration. And so I, I think those are really important tools to, to give to them. But if they decide that magic is no fun, don't, don't, don't be surprised. But, but this will t teach them how to channel that energy. That's true. And, and they need to. They need to know how to do it. <laughs> they need to know how to do what they want to do to make things happen. And that is, that is your job, to, to make them understand that, that energy is, doesn't, it doesn't go away. It doesn't come out of nowhere. It, it, it goes it someplace when you send shape it. Shape and form, that's um, it. One of my favorite things was long ago, in a coven far, far away. And we had, we had kids, and so they came to ritual just like the grown-ups did. Sit down, shut up, pay attention, don't cause any trouble in ritual. And one of the boys, who is not with us this year, because he was killed last year, was about six. And he said, you know what? I don't think that people understand, but when you call dragons to come to the quarters when we do ritual, they really show up. Uh -huh. And I said, yes, they do. Aren't you so cute? Um, but he knew and he saw. So I think uh -huh. they see a whole lot more than you think that they do at, at present. But I think that they, you know, so maybe we need to have a, you know, a thing for teenagers and we make them chop wood and carry water. And if they do that really good all day and they're really and, tired, we can and say, wax on, wax, and wax off. on, wax off and go, okay, now let me show you how to whatever study more efficiently, uh, get a job for the summer, whatever it is. No, you can't do love spells, shut up, I don't care. Um, and, and give them that reward. Here's your reward. You get to do it. We're going to sit down and we're going to do this as a family. Mm -hmm. When I had, when I was teaching, I had my own coven. I wouldn't, and this is going to show how old I am, I would not accept members into the coven, anybody into the coven, if they played Dungeons and Dragons. Wasn't going to do it. <gasps> And the, the reason for, for that is because at that point in time, there were so many people who were so into the game that they, they couldn't see the difference between fantasy and reality. They were actually jumping out 10-story buildings thinking they could fucking fly. And you know what? I wasn't going there. I didn't need that shit. You know, people were going to be well-rounded and have common sense in, in my group or I, they weren't going to be in my group. And I think that a lot of times, too, when you have covens or even study groups, People are under the mistaken impression that if they come to your group and they say, I want to be a part of this, you have to let them in. Guess what, folks? You don't have to let them in. You know, God, you, you need he to was choose. Gonna, he was going to uh, bring a lawsuit against me for not letting him come to coven and ritual activities uh, because I was curtailing one of his constitutional rights. And I said, I have a gun. And I'm going to curtail another one of your constitutional rights. But he thought... If he said, I'm coming and you have to let me. Uh -uh. Really? Really? You know, it's like, go ahead, go ahead and send me and, and, and let's see if they laugh at the cop shop when you file yeah. that. Why don't you go ahead you just go right ahead. Get yeah. yourself a lawyer and you file that lawsuit. Yeah. So, yeah. But I, and I think you're right. But, and I also think that, because I'm old, so I have a different opinion than a lot of people. I think that we don't discipline our children. I think that we don't make them do what they're supposed to. I think that we try to be their friend instead of their damn mamas and daddies. And you know what? They have friends. They need they parents. They have plenty of friends. Yeah. yeah but they need parents. I, you know, what I see here in the, with, you know, these people, these gr this group of people is not so much of that. No. It's more of mine and not only your own kid but other people's. Get down from there. I know you're not my kid. I don't give a damn. But do anyway. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and that's good because, you yeah. know, really... People can make fun of Hillary all they want to, but it takes a damn village. Yes, it does. Uh, because you know, if you I remember, got, I remember being a kid and riding my bicycle, you know, in the neighborhood. I'm, I'm six, seven, eight years old. Yeah. Well, you know, they they'd see me doing something. It, it took nothing for for Miss Margaret to come out of her house, run down those front porch, shake me up, pop me on the ass, and and send me back home and have called my mama before, before you got I got there. there. You better okay? know it because I shouldn't have been doing that. Yeah. You should have been doing that. Yeah. Our 
if they want it, they're supposed to have it. Do, 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 do you know? You know what my response to that is to son, them? And a younger son, the older son, is Mr. Responsible. The 24-year-old thinks the world owes it everything, and I cannot. Okay, you know what? My response to that kind of shit is you're not entitled to one goddamn thing you don't earn. And then don't give him anything. And then don't give me anything. Yeah. I mean, that's that, that's the way it is. If he lives with you, I pack his shit out. Don't care if you don't have a place to live. You're 24 years old. But I think we so can what? change how, you know? we, how we treat our kids or how we do what we demand of, of our children because... Even though this is a movement that's over 50 years old and a lot of us have been in it for a long time, it is new. It, but it is a community and I think we're, we're getting more interactive, we're growing more. You know, I know Pagans all over the place, most of you do too. We're talking to them on Facebook and they're, you know, <laughs> everywhere in the whole world. And so it's this movement that has all these tentacles that go mm -hmm. everywhere of very, for the most part, very like-minded people. But I think it's one of those things that we need to, to look at and go, in our community, we A, B, C, and D. Mm -hmm. But we also need for the children to come and go, okay, here's how we do it. Yeah. And here, whether, you know, whether you're a Wiccan, whether you're cafeteria pagan, whether you're a witch, whether you're Austria, whether you're Celtic Reconstruction, whatever you are, sit down, here's how we do it. Because I will guarantee you, that if you were Baptist, Buddhist, Catholic, Lutheran, Church of Christ, you would be raising your children in your religion. And your obligation is to raise your children in your religion. And when they're 18, you can tell them what my daddy told me. I don't give a damn what you believe. As long as you, you believe something. Church. But as long as you live in this house and I put clothes on your back and food in your stomach, you will do it my way and you will go to Catholic Church. And after that, I don't give a damn. And that's what you need to tell them. Yes. And, you know, because, oh, well, I want them to choose for themselves. He's 11. <laughs> what the hell is he going to choose? A blueberry popsicle or a strawberry popsicle? It's okay. quite like my mother-in-law said. Her, her grandson was giving us a bunch of static. Uh, we were in Michigan, and it was elk season. And so we were going to take the spotlights out, and we were just going to spotlight elk and, and see where they were running in herds. So, Mary's four-year-old is going with us, and it's cold, and he doesn't want to put on his jacket. And he's screaming, and he's yelling, and he's carrying on. My mother-in-law walks out there, and she says, Mary, God damn it, what the hell's wrong with you? You don't give a four-year-old a choice. You don't ask him whether he wants his jacket. And you James, don't explain to him. that goddamn jacket. <laughs> and get that, the car. Put that jacket on. And you know what? The kid put on his jacket. He got in the car. We never heard another peep. Yes. yes. Because okay. he responded yeah. to it. Yeah. You know, Firm. Last year we had, we were, they were cleaning up at the end of the day. And the mamas were in the cabin cleaning, and the little ones were running. And there was one about four. And I, we drove through. I think, I think Death Star was driving. And there's a kid standing on the roof of a car down here at the kid's cabin. And there's two more fixing to join him. And I said, stop this car. And I rolled the window down. And I said, what in the name of the gods are you doing? They all look at me. Get off of that car. Have you lost your minds? Are you crazy? Have you taken leave of your senses? Get down or I will break your legs. They all got down, and the one who had his hands on the car went, <gasps> <laughs> because that's what we ought to do. That's what we're supposed to do. We are the grown-ups. All right, okay. I'm done talking. Are we? I think. Do what? Say it again. Can you just go to Walmart with me and tell that to everybody there? Don't think I don't. <laughs> don't think I don't. And you know what? I just want, I just want people around me to behave their children. And even not in this situation, there are people who won't go to the movies with me. Because if you have children, and I've paid $9.50 to watch this movie, I want your child to be quiet. I don't want him to talk. I don't want him to roll a ball up and down the aisle. I don't want him to do any of that bullshit. And if you can't stop him, I will. And there was a bunch of, and it was an adult movie. Children had no business there. And there's a, two aisle, an aisle with two women and 47 children. <laughs> and they don't care what it is because it's a grown-up movie. And they're talking, to, and there's a baby who is probably not much bigger than him. And he begins to cry. And he cries, and he cries, and he cries. And I went, can I help you keep your baby quiet? She didn't really want for me to do that. And so she picked her baby up, and she left. But, oh, well. But, the, but, the end of the, oh, well. but her responsibility is to not let her child, who was a very cute little child, encroach upon your my $9.50 movie. Exactly. 
So I, I just I think that we can do a lot to change the face of the world as it goes because of because of who we are. Okay. Uh-huh. They will lock you up and take your children away because you don't take care of your children. So abusing? No. Discipline? Yes. Discipline your children or we will come get them. <laughs> That's right. Yay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> the clock says we got two minutes. Smell. So does anybody have anything they real, real quick they want to say, want to ask? Yes. in places where it doesn't show. How, okay, how how old are these kids? <laughs> my sister is 16 Well, honey, you know what? Okay, and why and Duck why tape. is it and why is it that it's your responsibility to to for them to Well, honey, to start with, you need to learn to be firm. Okay? You need to take, if, if this is your responsibility, then you need to take charge and you make believers out of them even if you have to bluff them. First thing I would do, does, does a 16-year-old drive? Well, that's handy. Mm, it is but, handy. But I would make damn sure that there aren't keys that that, that one can get to the car. Okay? Okay? But because, you know, you know, whether they're allowed to drive or not, trust me, been there, they will, okay? But, but you know, you're going to have to make believers out of them. You know, they know that you're afraid to raise your voice. And if you're afraid to raise your voice, she have you back up. Well, guess what, baby? Life is full of shit we don't like to do. You know, I, you, you know you're, you're, what I would say to you, baby, is you're probably way too nice. You know, the third, the, the sixteen-year-old, I think it's a little light to, to get that, I that, think I that one to mind I, I think you. If they didn't do what I said. I wouldn't do anything they needed. So yeah. if they need a ride somewhere, or they need an extra five dollars, or they need whatever, I wouldn't do it for them. You know, that that's where I would start to say, you know, it's a two-way street, and I'd pinch them where it doesn't show. You know, the the other thing is. Um, you could always put a little command control con compel oil in their shoes. Yeah. You certainly could. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think. So now we've devolved down into doing, doing spell work on children to make them behave. Oh, well, what the hell. <laughs> You'll have that. <laughs> For witches. <laughs> you could hit them with a magic stick. Yes. Yeah.